Hello, my name is Lamores Harris, and I am a friend and a student of Jerry Close. Um, over the past year or so, Jerry has been kind enough to share many of her techniques for creating this awesome car art and separations with me and many others as well. Through her tutorials, I've been able to take my car art to a whole new level. Um, I'm honored to have this opportunity to walk you through this little demo. It should be noted that I'm a student too, so please excuse me if I stutter or stammer or start to sob uncontrollably. Okay? Let's go. For this demo, I'll be following along with Jerry's PDF file that's included on your CD. It's titled Automatic Almost Instant Designs, um, Fully Separated. So. I made some notes here and everything, so here we go. Um, starting with step one. First thing it says is we're going to change the canvas size. Open up the background file you want to work with. I'm choosing the same one that she's using in her sample right here. Let's open up Photoshop here. Okay. Okay, looks like we're going to need to make the canvas size larger to um, accommodate all the other elements. So, from our top menu bar, let's go to Image and Canvas Size. Um, Jerry says here that she likes to keep the width the same, but double the height. So, she sets the anchor point to the top of the canvas so that all the empty space that's created will be at the bottom. And types in for a height, let's type in 32 inches. So the width is the same, height is doubled. It's doing that for us. Okay, now we have double the height of our actual image. Zoom out a little bit so we can see that. And now it says that we'll keep our um, background file open. We're going to come back to that. And um, we need to import our Illustrator file, which is the text for this actual practice piece. So go to File, Open. Navigate to where my files are in the Elements folder. There's the text right there. Select open. It says 300 DPI as a CMYK and uncheck the anti alias box. There, it's got our file open. So now we're going to go to our channel window, it's right over here our channels and she says highlight only the black channel so turn that on right there select all it's a control a on my pc i think maybe a command a on the mac so I select all and copy edit copy maybe that's a command c on the mac side and let's go back to our background file over here it says to highlight the black channel. Let's come down here and let's find that. Number seven black. This guy right here. And with our marquee tool, let's make a large selection at the bottom of our document. Marquee tool. Select it and there we go. Now let's paste the text that we copied from the text file. Hit it. Paste. Hey, there's my text. Sweet. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our magic wand tool and we're going to select the inner areas of that text. So I'm going to click on the magic wand tool. Anti alias is unchecked. Zoom in here a little bit so we can see this. There we go. And on the black channel, click right inside. Let's get this eye right here too there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand our selection so that the selection kind of falls into the 
black line that's right there. Zoom in a little bit closer. We'll see it a little better. And go to Select Menu, Modify, Expand. We'll expand it by two pixels. That's good. And click OK. There you go. You can see it kind of steps up in there just a little bit more, which is a, which is a good thing. Now I'll zoom out. And what we're going to do is come to the top of our channels, click on this gray channel. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our layers to create a text effect. Now I'm going to create a new layer. And I want to fill this layer with a gray color. So for my foreground color, I think that looks okay to me. Okay. And I'll do an Alt Backspace, which is the Edit Fill Foreground Color. Now I can double click to the right of the layer name and access my layer styles. I click Bevel and Emboss. Click on that. Then let's put in Jerry settings here. She's got 1,000% there. Size 43. Zero on the soften for the angle. For the shading 120 and 30. And that looks good. Okay. Right now the effect is still editable and in order to bring the bevel back into the channels it needs to be flattened. So Jerry says she creates a new layer like this. Then she's on this layer here. She click that little lock right there to lock them two together and clicking this little circle triangle thing merge linked. There flattens that into one layer. Now we can control C to copy it. Then let's go back to our channels palette and it says go to the red channel. National red right there and paste. Control G. Okay, I see I got all my channels turned on here. Let me turn them all off except for the red there. Now, in order to make the red bold and the highlighted areas more distinct, we're going to use the levels. We're going to go to Image, Adjust, Levels. I'm going to click the black eyedropper here to set the black point and click in the gray area which makes that all black. And now to make better highlight I'm going to click the white eyedropper and click in the lighter area here. Good. Okay. Now my system should remember the last thing that I copied which was the bevel text so I'm going to come over here and click on my solar blue channel and paste. Good. Now on this channel I'm going to go to image adjust levels there it is. and I'm going to click the white eyedropper this time I'm going to click right in the middle in that gray area. What that does is takes all that out and gives me a drop shadow, as you can see here. Notice it's not solid, um, which it shouldn't be, like Jerry says here. Um, why? Well, because a medium blue tone makes a great shadow on red, and I guess she hardly ever uses black to shadow colors. Interesting. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to highlight the orange channel over here. And it says to fill this area with 100% color. Push D on my keyboard, then an X, switch those two around, and hit Alt Backspace. There, 100% in that. Now we'll take a look at those three channels together. You see the orange and the blue and the red together, and there's the same beveled effect 
that we created in the layers. Cool. I'll turn on my black channel here so we can see that. And it says here that we're going to give it an inside stroke. We're going to highlight both the red and the solar blue channels. So my red's highlighted. And shift. I got my solar blue channel selected as well. Now it says when making strokes, make sure that your top color palette is 100% black. Mine is right there. And you push D on your keyboard to give you the default colors. Foreground, back, black, uh, white background. And go to edit, stroke. We're going to set it to 12 colors black. And set it to be inside of our selection area. And click OK. It's all pretty cool. Now it says we're going to make the outline of the text look like Chrome. All right. Let's zoom in a little bit here. All right. Now it says to highlight my black channel. Number seven right there. Deselect all of that. And using the magic wand tool, we're just going to select the empty outlined areas. Right here. Let's make sure we get these spaces in here. Holding down the shift key is adding to my selection. There we go. Now I'm going to go to the gray channel that's at the top. This guy up here. And remember, this guy is, um, he's a layer. It's not like all the, he's not a spot color channel. It's a CMYK. Then I'm going to click on layers, just like we did before. I'm going to make a new layer. Right there. And I'm going to fill the selection with the gray tone again. A gray tone right there. And I'll do an Alt Backspace. All right. Now we're going to double click to the right of this layer. Similar to what we did before. We're going to click Bevel and Emboss. Click on that tab. But this time we're going to use um, some different settings. We can get a nice sharp bevel here. Depth, 1000. Size, 65. Cool. 120 and then 30. And click OK. I'm going to create another layer again. I'm going to link these two. going to merge my linked layers, just like we did before. Now my outline section is still lit up. I'm going to do a control C to copy it. Go over to my channels and it says to highlight the solar blue channel right here and paste. Yay. And then it says to highlight the gray spot color channel, which is this one right here. And paste it there as well. And we're going to go to our levels again. Image adjust levels. And I'm going to choose the white eyedropper right here. And click on the midtones of the bevel, which should leave only the darkest areas visible. So right about in there. There we go. And select OK. And this time we're going to go to Image, Adjust, Brightness and Contrast. And we're going to move the contrast scale to 100. Slide it all the way over. Makes all of that nice and black. It's good, clean, hard edge. And we'll click OK. Okay, now we're going to tighten up our selection by holding down the Alt key and clicking near but not on the gray areas. There we go. Now that we have a tight selection on the gray, let's go and highlight the solar blue channel right there. And we're going to delete this selection from this channel just by pushing the delete key. 
There we go. And now we're going to highlight the black tone channel. This guy right here. And then we're going to go to image and edit stroke. No, wait, I see it says I'm supposed to make sure that my palette is black. And I didn't do that, so let's cancel that. Let's come over here and push D. And I'll push X. Now I'll go to edit, stroke, and put in three. Right here. And click OK. Now, the black is my foreground color here. I'm going to go to my brush palette. And I'm going to select the brush size about 45 here. And opacity about 50% or so. About there is cool. And in the black tone channel, right here, we're going to start to brush in um, some black just to give it a little more depth. There, zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little better. Just brush some right in there. Not too much. It says that a little black will go a long way. So we'll do some right there. Got a little bit right here. Just click and drag it in there. That's cool. Right here. Okay, so just like on those cooking shows, it just magically got done. I just pulled it out of the oven with all this black airbrushed in there. Actually, I just paused and went ahead and brushed it in. Now, let's take a look at all of them. We'll zoom out here. And I'll turn on make all my channels visible here. go go out and take a look all right I'm too heavy now we're going to highlight all of our channels so we're going to send this guy over here there we go and we're going to make a rectangular uh, marquee around the entire text like so. Okay, now we're going to use our magic wand tool. Hold down the Alt key. Click just outside of the text, but inside of the marquee selection. It's going to make a nice tight selection for us. Zoom out so we can see. Using my direct selection tool, I'm going to move the text up to the area that I want it to be in. pretty good. Now we're going to save our file. Save as here. Me. Okay, and now we're going to add the car. So let's open up the file with the car in it. I'll open. 56 Chevy. Okay. We'll zoom out a little bit on that guy so that we can get both files open side by side here. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is come over here to my background file, get my marquee tool, and I'm going to select a large area down here. I'm going to come over to my car file, select that, and I'm going to control click on the alpha channel here on the bottom so I can get a nice tight 
selection around the car itself. Start at the black channel of the car file. Just click on that. Selection's already defined by the alpha channel down here. And we're going to do a control C. Just copy. Then in the background file, which has this area still selected, I'm going to click on the black channel here, right there. And I'm going to do a control V or paste. And it paste command V. Now back over to the car file. I'm going to highlight the black tone channel. I'm going to copy it. Come back over to my background file. I like the black tone channel. Paste there. Turn that on. You can see both of them there. Let's zoom in here a little bit so we can see this car coming together over here. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of the remaining channels. I'm going to start here at the top with the gray. Control C. Come over here. Click the gray. Control V. Back over here, lemon yellow, control C. Back over here to my background file, control V. Control C on my orange. Control V over here. Control C on the solar blue. Let's copy this ultramarine. Same as dark blue over here. There you go. And we've done the two black tone channels. And let's get the white highlight channel as well. Paste it here. Okay. And move this over here. And let's turn these on. And we can take a look at it. There we go. We've copied all the channels over to this file. All right. Okay. Close my car file because I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to highlight all my channels here. That's my car still selected from before. I have the direct select tool here. And then I'm just going to move the car into the area where I'd like it to be. It takes a little while in this system. All right, there we go. Move them up to right about there, let's say. Okay, the car's a little small. So what we want to do is um, increase the size of it. And it's under the, under the edit menu. Free transform. You can grab this handle right here. I'm going to hold down the shift key to strain the proportions. Just going to drag it out until I get to the size that I want. There you go. A little bit small there. Good. Hit enter. And then we just increase the size of the car. Okay, at this point, if you wanted to add text you could click on your one of your black channels here and just add text normally like you would or you can add some fancy text by going through all the steps that we did before we're not gonna do that right here that's all in your um, tutorial in your PDF file as well so what we're going to do here at this point is make a selection area around this right here and we're gonna crop the design image crop make it a little larger so we can see what's going on it looks pretty cool Jerry does great work now at this point we're going to combine the two black channels let's deselect that and let's choose the black tan channel and the black tone channel okay image calculations 
we're going to choose the black channel from right here. And here, for the source 2 channel, will be the black tone channel. The blending mode is set to multiply, and we're going to click OK. There. Okay, it created a new spot color channel for me down here. And at this point, I can rename it. Let's double click on it. There it goes. And I'm going to name it number 7, black. And OK. And I can throw away these two channels right here because now they've been combined into this channel. So just garbage can. You want to delete that guy? Yeah, he's out of here. And let's delete this one as well. There we go. Okay. It says here there's a couple of channels that would make the print too heavy if they're left as is. One of these is the orange channel. So in the text it is used just to highlight the upper left side, but right now it covers the entire area. So we want to delete out the red from, from it, but we don't want to totally knock it all out. Makes sense. So it says, um, I just want the solid areas of the red knocked out from the orange. All right, it's my first time doing this, so here we go. And we can control how much red we select by using the color range. So let's click on the red channel here, there, and let's go to select color range. And now by bringing back the scale to around 50, you'll only get the solid areas of the red and none of the tone um, that would that you would like to overprint onto the orange. So let's move this back to what you got, 55. 55. There we go. Selection, okay. Let's see. Oh, okay, cool. So it's selected all of these red areas. Okay, now let's go back to our orange channel. And here, let's turn these guys off so we can see this. There we go. Click on the orange channel with the color range selection from the red and hit delete. All right, deleted all of the red areas out of that orange channel, leaving only the orange highlight area. As you can see, when I turn on one of these other channels, how that looks. Very cool. Okay, another channel that we want to do that to is the solar blue. So we're going to highlight the dark blue channel select that. I like the dark blue channel here. I'm going to go to color range, select color range, just like before, scale to around 50. Where was that before? Okay, that's cool. And okay. Select those areas. Let's turn this off so we can see just maybe the two blue ones together here. Okay. Now we're going to go to the solar blue channel and select delete. There we go. We didn't need all that solar blue underneath there, just making this print heavy because that's where the um, dark blue is. So that's pretty cool. Now we're going to do the same thing for the black channel. Click on the black channel here. Click that on there. I'm going to select color range, about 50. That's good. Select OK. Because we're going to be deleting this from the red and the dark blue channels. So let's click on the red channel here. Let's turn that on. We'll do these one at a time. Delete that from there. And same thing on the dark blue channels. Dark blue channel, excuse me. All right. That's all looking pretty good. Next we're going to add a couple of um, finishing touches here. Um, first thing we're going to do is let's turn on our white highlight channel here. And we're going to do a control click on that, which will select all of those. And then it says, just highlight all of the other channels and delete the sparkle selection. And click on the black, hold down the shift key. So 
select all the other ones and delete. I'm just going to clear those out from all the other channels. Okay. Well, there you have it. I think I got my channel in the wrong place there, but all right. So, I think that's it for this part. And we have taken all those elements and put them together into one design. It's a very cool thing. Once again, you can add text to the black layer if you want or bring in fancy text like we did before. In your PDF file, there is a, an additional section on how to set up your output settings. Also, how to take your design to film. And then there's another one on changing colors, which actually looks pretty cool. And maybe we'll um, get an opportunity to try to do that one next time. Once again, you can add text to the black layer if you want or bring in fancy text like we did before. In your PDF file, there is a, an additional section on how to set up your output settings. Also, how to take your design to film. And then there's another one on changing colors, which actually looks pretty cool. And maybe we'll um, get an opportunity to try to do that one next time. Once again, I'd like to say thanks to Jerry for putting this out there and just sharing this kind of information. It's, um, it's a rare thing in this field, as many of you know. And um, hopefully this um, helps some of you people out. Um, very cool. Thanks a lot. Bye.